I mean, this is pretty much where it got started for me. This is where I started getting serious about baseball. And I started realizing that I was pretty good at it. That's it, this was our home dugout here. It was a little bit smaller back then. It only had one gate. It's funny how I still remember it. But yeah, during a practice, the coach kicked me out and mouthed one of these kids off. And I guess his dad was sitting in the stands and he ended up grabbing me by the neck and basically like beating me up a little bit. And I was about 11 years old and he was a grown man. So uh, I walked down the street to a payphone and I called my cousin who was about a 250 pound biker. He came up here on his Hello and his Harley and uh, gave it to that guy. Needless to say, nobody ever touched me again in this league, that's for sure. And I was always getting mixed up in fights and you know, getting into trouble. I didn't put up with anybody's shit, basically, right? So I still got in fights all the time at Keith Lynn, but fights were every day there. So you didn't get kicked out for it. I mean, it was just part of the school. Like, you know, the, the, t the teachers dealt with it. You can't do that shit nowadays. You know, growing up, never laid a hand on my brother, not once, but he sure shit kicked the shit out of me. And uh, I mean, it, it was kind of devastating for a, you know, seven year old kid to go home, get his teeth knocked out by his dad for being late because he's a drunk Irish prick, so to speak. So, you know, that was tough growing up, but now, I mean, my old man's gone. He, he uh, passed away almost two years ago, and uh, which kind of sucked because we had a bit of a falling out about my childhood. And he, I just wanted him to apologize or give me an explanation for that, and he never did. So we kind of had a falling out, and I said, fuck you. You know what, if you can't apologize for the shitty things you did, then I don't want to be your son. <clears throat> then he ended up in the hospital and he passed away and I didn't get that closure with him. So that affected me. The last seven years of my life, I've had some serious ups and downs, but I've always managed to keep baseball in my life, no matter what. I mean, there's been times where I've showed up to the games drunk and fucking high. Like, and I'm not talking about okay. weed. I mean, I was so heavy into it. Uh, I was 28 and I was drinking and partying a lot. And I was using so much drugs that I ruptured my spleen. And I, I basically bled to death in uh, Lionsgate Hospital. They transferred me to St. Paul's and I was dead on arrival. And they brought me back to life. And uh, I was on a, I was on life support, basically with tubes down my throat and in my neck and in my abdomen, and I had 22 um, blood transfusions. I was in drug abuse to coma for a week. I mean, when you snap out of something like that and you come back to it, and your family's standing over top of you, you kind of think to yourself, "What the fuck am I doing?" Right? You know, you're not you're not just hurting yourself; you're hurting everybody around you people that care about me. You know, I got my mom in tears, I got my, my brother there, my sister-in-law. I mean, it's, it's a pretty shitty feeling. And you know, I was, I, I, after that, I was back on track. It helped me actually quite a bit. I mean, I've played with guys that are my age basically my whole life, right? And then you start playing with guys that are, that are 20, it kind of, you know, it brings you back to life a bit, right? You know, you, can, you want to compete with the younger guys. So, I mean, it's been good. You know, I'm, I thought, you know, maybe I was done the last couple of years, but last year I probably played one of the best years that I've played in probably four or five years. So, I mean, playing with the younger guys, it's been great. It's a whole different attitude. They're younger, they're more positive. 
They're not bitter old men. Yeah, no, Brian's been an excellent uh, example for all of us. He's keeping us everybody grounded, um, just tries to keep, you know, everybody focused on not just baseball, but just improving um, in general, in our lives, everything. Um, and I, f I feel like I, you, f you get that feeling from him that uh, he absolutely feels the same way in his own life. He takes it absolutely to heart. So it's, uh, it's great to see that, and especially because you know, a lot of these guys are really young, kind of just at that, that point in life where it's, it's really trying to figure out what your, what your values are, and baseball is a great, uh, great way to establish that. And Brian is absolutely great at uh, driving that point home. So no, he's an awesome influence. Without baseball in my life, I'm not too sure where things would, would be. I mean, it, I think it would be a, be a lot worse because even as a grown man, I know, I mean, it's not like I'm getting paid for it or anything, but I just respect it and love it so much that, I, I mean, I could have been making a lot worse decisions. But knowing I have a baseball game the next day, I'm like, fuck it, no, I'm like, you know, not gonna do that, not gonna go out and party, like I wanna be, you know, I'm looking forward to baseball more than anything. So, I definitely think life, life definitely could have been a lot worse without baseball. I'm not gonna be able to play forever. I mean, the body's breaking down. So, I mean, it's hard for me to swallow, but I gotta, I gotta come to grips with it. I can't play forever. So if I can't play, I still want to be on the field and I still want to be a part of baseball. I mean, baseball's given me so much, right? Oh I mean, it's, it's only fair that I give some back now.